Hello friends, how are we doing? Welcome back to my channel, I am Megan. Today we're gonna be chatting about the series that I think booktube is snoozing on. They're snoozing, they're like, what are you doing booktube? <laughs> wake up Pearl, wake up. These are basically just the series I think are severely underrated and I thought, you know, I chat a lot here about, oh, I need to read these series. I need to get caught up on series. Am I reading enough series? But like, let's actually chat about some of the ones I've loved, right? Let's let's get rid of the negativity. Let's bring in the positivity and let's get excited for some great series, in my opinion, that more people should be reading. So yeah, it's just a book series that I think more people should read and more people should get excited about. Book series you might not have heard about before, but I think are worth your time. Pretty simple vlog, but I just felt like we needed some series positivity. Not a vlog, not a vlog, did tell a bit of a lie there. <laughs> Pretty simple video, but I felt like we needed some series positivity. So let's just get into it. Number one on this list, you know I had to do it. This series is probably the only series on this list I have never heard another booktuber speak about unless they're reading it like for a themed video where I have mentioned it so they read it kind of thing. The Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. The Lady Hardcastle Mysteries, okay? The Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. I can't believe that. I actually can't believe that. This is how many I've read. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just about to read the seventh this month, hopefully. But this is Lady Hardcastle Mysteries, where like in 1910s-ish England, kind of Edwardian England, we're following Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo. They have retired from a past life of escapades and excitement to this town called Litter and Cotterill. And you think, oh, it's gonna be quaint, like a little English village with the pub and the house and it's the murder hotspot of the world, girls. <laughs> so each book is a cozy kind of murder mystery, them solving mysteries, murders, some other mysteries. And I know I've spoken to you about this a lot, but I love them. I love them. I love them. <laughs> so yeah, the first one, I'll just hold that up because the stack is heavy. The first one is A Quiet Life in the Country. My favorite one is probably still the second one in the market for murder. Now, if you're going to read these based on my recommendation, which you should, they are fun. The relationship between Lady Hardcastle and Flo is beautiful, but you need to read the audiobooks, okay? The narrator for the audiobooks could like slap me across the face and I'd say thank you. Like, she's changed my life. She, at this point, she's changed my life. <laughs> I love the audiobooks for this. A lot of them are on script. I always have a code, by the way, down below for you to get two months free of script. I also have a code for you to get a month free of Audible with one free audiobook. And if you're a Prime member, you get two free audiobooks. Or I have a code for 30 days free of Kindle Unlimited. So just so you know. And I always link the uh, links for these as well if you want to buy them through an affiliate code from me, if you want to help me out, you know. No, <laughs> I only just started doing this. I never did affiliate codes. But I just like, why not? Why not just stick them down there? And I think the three, the free trial codes are probably the best. Best deal for you. Anyways. <sighs> getting distracted. Yeah, most of these are on script. The most recent one that I need to read isn't. And I feel like a few of them that I did listen to on there have disappeared. With script, things can come and go. Do you know what I mean? Things can be there for a while and then be gone and then be back. But most of them are on script and I just love them. I love them. I'm obsessed. Their relationship is one of my favorite relationships. They've become comfort characters for me. I feel like the whole series now is kind of gonna be like a 4.55, like all the books that I read because I'm just so attached. I'm so invested. I'm so deep into this world. It's a very interesting relationship because obviously Flo is her maid, but they are equals, you know? But they kind of like take the mick <laughs> out of the, the dynamic of the relationship. Like Lady Hardcastle often calls her like tiny servant or something. <laughs> I've always growing up loved like Victorian, Edwardian kind of settings in England, you know, yes, it may be romanticizing it somewhat, but it's a cozy mystery, what do you expect? But I just love them. I think they deserve so much more hype. I just think it, they're just such a great time. They're just such a fun little palate cleanser of a time and I love them. So you gotta go read them, guys. Like, I know, I sometimes I don't vlog them now because I'm so deep into the series. Like, sometimes I just read them in my own time, but I cannot recommend them enough. Next, we have The Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle. I don't have the first one. The first one's Sleeping Giant. This is a very difficult series to pitch to you because, like, the series goes... I think some of the beauty of it is it goes wild. Like it goes crazy. Like I can't tell you anything bar the first like 50 pages of the first book. It is sci-fi. And the first book we're discovering some like very large body parts that look like they could belong to some kind of machine or robot. And is it to do with aliens? That's basically all you need to know. Now, I don't know if these were popular on booktube before I was on booktube. I don't know if they had a bit of a heyday back in the day, but I haven't heard a ton of people speak about them. When did this second one come out? This came out in 2017. Okay, so like a little while ago, but again, another book 
you have to read the audiobooks for these, okay? These are all told through interviews, basically. So all, the, all three books are told through interviews, recorded conversations, diary entries, some of them, and it has a full cast audiobooks, right? Oh my God. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. Those actors, <laughs> those actors, <laughs> they said, I'm gonna put my whole <laughs> into this. <laughs> my whole act to see into this. <laughs> They are so good. They are so good. I just love full cast audiobooks. When I read a book that could be a full cast or like a book with a podcast element in it and they don't do like full cast sound effects music, like what's the point? What is the point? What's the point if you're not gonna give me it in the audiobook? Go give me it. Where's the flavor? Where's the flavor in this? The first two are great. The last one, Only Human, wasn't my favorite. I don't think it necessarily needed to exist. <laughs> or it could have been like a novella or something. I don't know. The third one, it's still good, but it didn't need to happen. The first two were great. And I loved the direction it took in Waking Gods. Uh, you have these characters that you go on this journey with, but also a lot of characters come and go. Like the series is not afraid for some, you know, like it's, everyone's a bit expendable in this series. And like I said, it goes on such a journey that I kind of want you to go into it blind. But I just think this is such a fun sci-fi series and I never... I think I've heard Gabby speak about it, but I haven't heard many people speak about this series. Then I have a graphic novel series that I don't hear a ton of people speak about, and that is the Sheets graphic novel series. We've got Sheets and Delicates by Brenna Thumner. I think I heard Ariel Bissett talk about this back in the day, and I know Brenna Thumner does some stuff for their podcast, Books Unbound podcast as well. I love this. I love this, particularly Delicates. I think Sheets was like a four star for me, strong. This was five star. Okay, and the third one in this series is coming out, I think next month sometime. We're following, I think her name is Marjorie. I'm pretty sure it's her name, Marjorie. Yeah, I think she's about 13 and her mother has recently passed away. And she is kind of running her family's laundromat at 13 because her dad is on, is, you know, in his grief, unable to do that. The first book is really about her and this ghost that she meets called Wendell. And all the ghosts in this book like look like Halloween ghosts, <laughs> like sheets. That's why it's called sheets because the laundromat and the sheets. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but- I've connected them. And this second one, we meet another character. What is her name? Eliza. We meet Eliza who is being bullied at school and it's kind of her story. I think the third one is probably gonna be Wendell's story particularly because we don't really know how Wendell passed away. But they're just like a lovely graphic novel series. Definitely up there is one of my favorites. Let me show you. We've got a lot of like blue and purple tones. Let me show you. Is that focus? I hope so. Can you see? It's like all blue and purples. It's really beautiful. Oh my God, as if it's blurred by Lemony Snicket. That was a combo I was not expecting. <laughs> I just think if you're looking for a new graphic novel series that is heartwarming, but also tackles some difficult topics, I just think this is such a great series and I'm so excited for the third one. Okay, guys, the next series, I don't know if it can be cast as like underrated booktube sleeping on it, because I do know some people have read this now, okay? But like, it's not enough. It's never enough. Okay. I believe Booktube is sleeping on these. <laughs> Lisa, let me talk! So I'm the fucking one telling the truth in it because everyone's so scared to fucking tell the truth! I just think, I just think, I mean, I, guys, if you're new here, favorite series of all time. Favorite series of all time. So my favorite books of all time. I've only reread the first one once. I've never reread the second and third. I'm like putting it off. I'm putting it off. I think the second one is my favorite. Like I could verily, ha very, ha verily happily, <laughs> if I was on a desert island, let's say, and I could only take one series, it would be this. I could very happily read this for the rest of my life and nothing else. Another one, you need the audiobook, okay? I discovered this first one, Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter, on a whim. I remember I was doing like a murder mystery vlog. This isn't necessarily murder mystery, but I was trying to find like another book for the vlog. And I just scrum scrumbled. It's scrum to the umptious. <laughs> Stumbled across this book on script and my life has never been the same. I love this. So if you don't know, the Athena Club Mysteries, we're following daughters and female versions of men from classic Victorian literature. So we've got Mary Jekyll and Diana Hyde. We have Justine Frankenstein. We have Catherine Moreau and Beatrice Rappuccini are kind of our main group of girlies, but then we have like some other ones like Lucinda Van Helsing in a later book. Oh my god, so good. It's them solving mysteries together, but it's their sisterhood. I'm like, listen, I'm not a big character girly, but I would die for each and every one of them. Do you know that there was supposed to be a TV show? Mm. There was supposed to be a TV show, it never happened. Oh, I would kill, I would kill. Ugh. <laughs> 
I just love them. I've always said if I ever win the lottery, I am setting up a publishing house and I am just paying Theodore Goss to write more of this series forever. It's a lot of fantasies. And when I feel the fantasy, it is my reality. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. I would do that with my money. If I ever win the lottery, and suddenly, like, I wouldn't tell you, because I'm not telling you if I'm in the lottery, because no, you shouldn't tell people. Don't even tell your family, if I'm honest. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you, but like, it's Theodore Goss, there's like a new imprint. And uh, suddenly, all it's publishing is Theodore Goss books. I've come into some money, okay? And that's what I'm putting it into. I love these more than anything in the world. I can't explain to you how incredible they are. I love the writing. I love a good Victorian setting. I'm a bit of, you know, I've loved Victorian history since I was a kid. I just think it's so like, a great setting for like mysteries and like dark shit but you oh, just oh. <laughs> and I've always said one of my favorite parts of this is that Catherine is writing the story and the girls will cut in throughout the story like being like oh that's not how that happened or like you're chatting shit Catherine. <laughs> what do they say that but I just love them I love them I love them I love them the second book is way too long but like I don't care it has no reason to be this long it's like 700 800 pages no, 700 pages. It has no reason for that long, but uh, am I complaining? No, I love it. <laughs> so in my opinion, this series, but she be sleeping on it. More of you should read it, more of you should love it. The idea that someone doesn't love this series, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even fathom that because oh, I need to reread the second one soon, don't I? Thing is, I've planned all my videos out for the rest of the year and I've got like 10,000 books to read, but like I think I need to make time. Maybe I'll do it right at the end of the year when I'm probably like done reading. If I get ahead of my reading, I'll be done and I can just maybe reread these at the end of the year. I love that. <laughs> then we have a YA series, a YA fantasy series. That I, listen, I don't love it as much as that. I, mean, I don't love anything as much as that. But I do think that it is a bit underrated and I do think more people should read them. And that is The Ravens duology by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. I'd say this is one of the only like dual author co-written books that I've loved. There's a few others, but I don't tend, sometimes they like don't vibe with me. I've never read Cass Morgan or Danielle Page. Cass Morgan wrote the 100 series and Danielle Page wrote the Dorothy Must Die series. And this is basically witches in a sorority coven and we follow like two different perspectives. I think they each kind of wrote one of the perspectives, but the books do feel cohesive. And that's what you read to know. There's a bit of romance, it's YA, but it's set at university. And I think it does a great job of like do doing YA university. University is an interesting place, right? Because so much of the adult books we read set at university are like drugs, murder, sex, dangerous things. You know what I mean? I, I didn't feel a lot different at university to how I felt in secondary school, <laughs> really. And I think there's space for YA set university as well. I think there is, okay? I think that's, some people think that's a controversial statement. I think there's space and room for that because like we don't all have to be drug, sex, rock and roll at university. Uh, me and Tom were just in bed playing Pokemon most of the time, if I'm honest. <laughs> no drugs involved. <laughs> I just think this is a series I don't hear a lot of people speak about. These were both like four stars to me, but I think they're just a solid YA witchy, Look, if you like witches, this could be one to put on your list for like autumn time. Then one series that I had like kind of mixed experiences with, but I do want to give a shout out. And that is the Forward Collection. Now this is exclusives, I think on Audible. They're all short stories. They're each order of books about like an hour long, each of them. And they're all sci-fi basically. We've got many different authors. I'm trying to remember who, like Andy Weir, Blake Crouch, Veronica Roth. There's six, who am I forgetting? I can't remember. Anyways, by far my favourite in this series was the first one, Ark by Veronica Roth. It's just this story, I think it's like the end of the world. There's a spaceship leaving Earth and we're following these scientists who have been like, they've been cataloguing stuff on Earth before they leave Earth, humanity has, and there's like these, they specialise in flowers, I think, these people. It's a very emotional short story. It made me want to read Veronica Roth. I've never read Veronica Roth before. I've now read Poster Girl, which I did enjoy, but like this short story made me cry, right? And I just think it's a fun little series of these short stories with, with varying levels of success, but I think they were pretty interesting and unique ideas for sci-fi, where the world could go. So listen, I didn't give them all like, I think some of them were like three stars, do you know what I mean? But that Veronica Roth one is still one of my favorite short stories I've ever read. And I've never heard anyone speak about this short story series. So if you have Audible, 
I feel like they're included in the membership. I don't feel like you have to use a credit to listen to them. Uh, otherwise I don't think I would have listened to them. So go check it out if you've ever wanted to give it a try. And then my final series that Booktube is sleeping on. I think this series, I've never had anyone speak about it. I think they only have like 200 ratings on Goodreads, some of the books in this series. Like no one's read this series. But it is the Forgotten Women series by Zing Sing. I love these. So <laughs> I've read the writers and the leaders. I have two more to read, which I think are the artists and the scientists and it's basically talking about forgotten women dark history which is my favorite flavor of history they all have oh i love how i'm going on the pages that don't have them but each story is accompanied by a beautiful piece of artwork about the woman and we just have about three pages going through their lives and what they did and i just think like I love women, okay? I love history about women. And I think that they're quite short. They're just a great little thing to read to like educate you on some history that is forgotten, right? History is so male dominated. And I just think, let's push back on that. By far my favorite was the leaders. The thing about the writers was they were all writers. <laughs> Whereas with the leaders, there was people leading in different ways. The writers ended up feeling a bit repetitive for me. I don't know if the artists and the scientists will feel the same. I don't know, it was just like everyone liked writing. It wasn't something to be liked. It was something to be understood from an academic perspective. Well, they... Obviously, you're not an academic. No. And I love writing. I love books. But I don't know. There wasn't as much variation in this one as there was in this one. Because this one, there was like four parts. So we had the rebels, the warriors, the rulers, the activists, the reformers. So there was quite like a big chunk of variation on like how the women you know were leaders so I think I enjoyed that a bit more but I just think the fact that these only have like 200 ratings some of them on Goodreads it's severely underrated and I just think if you're interested in non-fiction if you're interested about women's history this is the series that you should be picking up. Okay, that is the series that I think Booktube is sleeping on. Feel free to let me know if you think actually some of these are pretty popular on Booktube. I mean, here's the thing, I know some people are afraid to change case, but it, it will never be hyped enough to me. I know I'm delusional when it comes to this book. I know I'm clouded. I know, I just don't care. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. <laughs> But let me know what some series you've loved are that you think Booktube is sleeping on because I always need more to read, evidently. Like, I'm actually, I'm running out. I'm running out, series. <laughs> so let me know some series that you think Booktube is sleeping on and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!